Islands in the project. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, at this time, I'd be looking for an approval of our regular meeting agenda. Are there any deletions, additions? Madam Chair, I'll, I'll move our regular agenda. Motion made by Commissioner Dolan. I'll second. Seconded <clears throat> by Commissioner Foby. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Moving on to item number two on the, our consent agenda. Um, anybody have any additions or deletions? I'm aware of a few. Um, we're going to be pulling the commissioner committee appointments for separate consideration to do some um, additions to some of the committees. And that is, and then we're also going to be adding uh, Item number 24, to set a public hearing for the issuance of an on-sale liquor license for the hideout due to change in ownership. So unless there are any other deletions or additions, I'd make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of number two for amended commissioner committee appointments and the addition of 24. Madam Chair, I'll move approval with those changes. Motion made by Commissioner Foby. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Barant. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. All right, we will now be discussing item number two on the amended commissioner committee appointments. Um, there has been an ask to um, add an alternate to the APO um, policy board meeting, and um, Commissioner Barant. Um, has covered that in the past, and it would be nice if we could have an alternate for that committee as well, if everybody's okay with that. Madam Chair, when does that meet? <coughs> that meets the third Thursday of <clears throat> every month up in St. Cloud at the library. I serve as the um, representation on that body now. Okay. Third Thursday at what time? Um, they meet at 4.30. Madam Chair, so we're proposing to leave Barb as the alternate? Yes. Okay. Well, add. There doesn't appear. Yes. There does. There is not an alternate on that. Um, oh, okay, Madam Chair. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so yes, we're sir. good with that one. Then also there was some discussion. Are we talking about the EDA? We don't need to be talking about that because nope. that's just going to be an open meeting. Correct. All right. And was there anything else? Um, Madam Chair, I would like added, this would be on the third page under where the uh, committee assignments are, an AMC appointment to the Futures Leadership Academy. I was asked to join that a few weeks back. <clears throat> so. On page three. Did we get that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other additions? for the committee assignments or changes. All right, hearing none, um, looking for a motion to approve the committee assignments as amended. Madam Chair, I'll make the approval, uh, make the motion to approve the new committee assignments. Motion made by Commissioner Dolan. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Barant. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. All right, moving on to announcements. What do we have, Mr. Messler? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Just a couple short announcements. Uh, first of all, some uh, good news. Uh, the uh, Stearns County uh, Board of Commissioners voted three to two to approve the uh, creation of the St. Cloud Regional Airport Authority. 
uh, they have now joined Sherburne County as well as Benton County in making those approvals. Uh, the Joint Powers Enabling Resolution now will go to the City of St. Cloud City Council uh, for their consideration later this month. Uh, should they approve it, uh, the next action will be to establish a working group uh, to work over the next several months to prepare for what hopefully will be a January 1st, 2021 uh, uh, start of an independent regional airport authority. Uh, the working group will uh, kind of handle the mechanics and at the same time the three uh, county boards as well as the city uh, will have to consider appointments uh, to the working group who ultimately hopefully will sit on the authority. There will be nine members, two from each of the four jurisdictions plus one at large. Uh, and so uh, should the city approve it, uh, the four administrators will get together start the mechanical process of, of each bringing uh, nominations, opening them up for interest, and then bringing them to their respective boards. The at-large, we haven't figured out how we'll do it, but we'll, we'll work on that as well during the next several months. So that was a, a good news and a great start. Um, a special thanks to uh, Commissioners Foby and Schmiesing for their incredible leadership uh, on, on getting this done and getting it through to as far as it is. It's, uh, it's really amazing. Uh, and I would note just a second item on that, uh, there is interest in some of the other smaller general aviation airports uh, to really take some of that momentum and look at their own strategic plans. And uh, we've seen that both in Stearns County as well as here in Sherburne County. So that's exciting as well. Uh, second, a note from Andrew. Uh, the crews have been out, as you can imagine, with the snow removal. Um, while we haven't had one large, single large event, there have been multiple small events over the last several weeks. Uh, and uh, hopefully for keeping you in, in communication, we've been forwarding the more, um, you know, the more significant updates just so you're aware of when the crews are out and where they're out and uh, what kind of conditions we're seeing. And as you can imagine, of course, with uh, uh, the really slippery conditions today, they've been out quite a bit. And so I'll keep you updated on those as well. And then lastly, uh, legislative updates. Uh, uh, we are uh, working with our delegation in St. Paul to try to get some hearings uh, scheduled where we need them. Uh, in particular, we're working with uh, uh, the Senate to try to get a hearing for our big bonding requests. Uh, that's important because those deadlines come fast. And so um, if you have a chance to see some of our, our local senators, if you would ask them to ask uh, Senator Senjum for a hearing, that would be really helpful. Okay. That's Anything it. Else? That's it. All right. Moving on then to our open forum. Um, I'm going to ask the administrator to read um, the open forum policy so everybody understands it. If you have not already signed up, please take this time to do so. The sign-up sheet is over at the table there. Bruce. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, the purpose of the open forum uh, section on the county board's agenda is to allow public input and or information to be presented <laughs> to the board as a whole that does not require any action by the board. Personal attacks of any kind against another person or a commissioner are not allowed. Campaign style presentations are also not allowed. The time limit is three minutes per speaker, and at the beginning of the meeting, we have set aside time for five speakers. If there are additional speakers, they will be accommodated at the end of the meeting. All input or information is to be addressed to the Board of Commissioners as a whole and not to individual members or to the audience. Speaker handouts are public information. Uh, those need to be provided to the clerk of the board, and such co uh, copies of handouts are available for the board and to the public as needed. And the county board chairperson will ensure that the open forum policy is followed. Thank you. All right, that being said, Keisha, is there anybody for open forum? Yes, Madam Chair, there are four. We'll start with Marie Ariaga, and it is in regards to the detention center. Welcome. Good morning. If you could state your name and address, that would be awesome. Time 
lost over 50 pounds. He had diarrhea on a daily basis. The stress caused severe headaches. His blood pressure skyrocketed out of control. He was required to take medication for it, which he doesn't like to do, but he felt if he didn't comply, there would be consequences. He broke a tooth eating an uncooked potato and was left to suffer needlessly. Oftentimes the food and being a chef himself, he felt was just simply poorly handled so that it is spoiled and left many people ill. He lost his will to survive because he lost his family. He tried to make the best of a bad situation because that's his personality. He carefully moderated his behavior to avoid trouble. He made acquaintances with other detainees as well as staff, and both groups called him grandpa. My husband is trilingual. He speaks English, Spanish, and French. That gave him the opportunity to speak with some of the other detainees from the Somali nationality. He did his best to translate for others and pointed out to the staff that the signs were incorrectly translated and didn't mean what they expected it to mean. Staff members just shrugged, said that's what they gave us, we're just doing our job. My husband is traumatized by the 169 days he spent in the facility here in Sherburn County. The nightmares never end and he never sleeps. I too suffer on a daily basis. It is unsafe where my husband is for him, for his family there, and for me if I ever have the chance or funds to go visit him. He can never come home. I haven't seen my husband in a year, and I'm not likely to see him this year either. Before last year, I didn't think of Sherburn County I didn't care what happened here. I didn't care how the city grew. I didn't care how the buildings and infrastructure were paid for. I care now, because I know the truth. The buildings, the infrastructure are paid by the deportation machine that destroyed my family. Shame on all of us for allowing this to happen. Thank you for your it's sorry. Comments. We need to do what's right, not just our jobs. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Who's next? Next, we have Patty Keeling from St. Cloud on the Detention Center as well. Good morning. My name is Patty Keeling. I'm from St. Cloud. Um, the reason I'm here is to speak about uh, our brothers and sisters who are in your jail. I know last time when we were here in November, I spoke, I spoke about Judas. I spoke about the blood money that he took because he wanted to uh, give Christ up. And that is what I feel is happening here in this jail. You're giving our people up. I want to read something that I read this morning before I came. It's the reading of the day. And it says, do not, do not remember, do you not remember how many wicker baskets full of fragments you, you picked up? That's from Mark 8, verse 19, 18 to 19. And in that reading, Jesus tells us to care tenderly for the crumbs that would be otherwise disregarded or wiped away. That's the people in this jail. They're being disregarded. On, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but on Christmas Eve, there was a, an announcement to everyone in the jail that all undocumented would be put in solitary confinement and not be fed for two days. Is there something wrong with that?
that, that totally disturbs me. And our organization, Asamblea de Derechos Civiles, the Assembly of Civil Rights, is not going to stop talking to the people that we need to talk to about this. And you're going to hear from us again. I, you know, I'm not calling anybody out, but this is your job. These are the people that you're supposed to be humanly taking care of not disregarding like crumbs. Jesus tells us to take care of our people. He tells us to welcome our neighbors. He invites us. And I invite you to look into this. I invite you to ask Sheriff Brat, what was that about? What is the solitary confinement about? Thank you, Patty. We will take that under advisement. And thank you for your comments. Next, we have Chris Vani of St. Cloud as well. Welcome. Good morning. Um, I come to this issue as the mother of immigrants. My children are adopted. And um, I'm not particularly religious. This is not about um, my Christian faith. This is about who I am as a human being in this country that was built on immigration. Um, I, I think that we're gonna look back on this time and say, what did we do? Why, why did we treat people with such disdain? The, the issue of um, immigration is a, is a complicated issue, and clearly it needs to be addressed. But rounding up people, putting them in jail, as Marie's husband, as many folks here can attest, it's, it's not doing us any good. What it's, what it's doing is giving the <laughs> Sherburn County some money, but it's, it's destroying our souls. So I'm asking you to please reconsider taking money from the federal government for this very evil task that they've gone down, this road that they've gone down, and the people who are in the jail now, the detainees, ensure that they're treated like human beings. Please. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Keisha? Next, we have Malena Gutierrez of St. Cloud as well on the detention center. Good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Malena Gutierrez from St. Cloud, and I am here again um, because I am the person who received the calls of the families that were lack, lack for two days. And, and Christmas Eve and Christmas, and the family, and I see the text that the inmates sent that they will, they they got damaged food, like the food was fire, it was smell, and they didn't eat, and instead of giving a good food, they lock up them and they send people to the hall. So I received those calls and I believe on that because the family who called me, they are been they are been part of this of this uh, these things that are happening like trying to find out a way to fix our system. Um, and I believe that because my brother was was arrested. My brother was arrested in November. And he has a work permit. And he was arrested and put it in this jail. And he said that he was for 22 hours every day in a cold room during the time while his, while his lawyers were trying to get out him of jail. 
So he said he just got one hour in the morning to, to get food and to get um, her teeth brush and make a phone call. And he got again to the cold, like the freeze room. He said that he got another hour at night to get food. And he said that the food is not good. He said that the food is, is, is not good. It's like it's something that they don't, they, they don't eat. They don't, it's bad. But um, one thing that he's been saying that the treatment is really bad. They treat the people how they are like if they were criminals. And, and um, they send people without doing anything wrong to the hall. And he is, even that he has a documents, he's been mis mistreated as a, as a person that doesn't have like nothing. I just wanna tell you that I would like to have my email and to have a conversation to bring the people and testify. Do the uh, uh, talk to you and directly with you. They, f they don't feel safe to come here. And that's why we are doing. That's why we are coming to bring everything to you. And you need to listen. You need to do something. Thank you, we appreciate those comments. Anyone else, Keisha? Well, that is everybody, Madam Chair. All right, everybody that signed up to speak has spoken. Um, we are now done with our public comment period and we'll be moving on to the next item on the regular agenda. <coughs> Thank you for coming. Next item, number five one, the Vonpool Waste Management Campus Request for Solid Waste Ordinance Waiver. You don't look like Erica. <laughs> I'll take care of the waiver, Madam Chair, and then okay. Thank you, sir. Erica will come up and she'll handle the license part. Should we take a second for the room to clear? Thank you. Right, sir. Carry on. Madam Chair, members of the board, attached to the RBA is a resolution that would grant a solid waste waiver to Vanco. Vanco submitted a waiver uh, application for placement of three, uh, three additional leachate holding tanks within a 200 foot buffer area. That buffer area is designed to provide for mitigation if necessary, screening, maintenance roads, and, and such. This due to the existing infrastructure, placement of, of their leachate holding tanks need to be in this area. And because of the language and ordinance, they, it was necessary that they apply for a waiver. The, the process in uh, providing or, or Applying for that waiver, you have to go through the, the process um, <coughs> due to the, you know, the, the findings are listed in the resolution. Staff recommends approval of that waiver. All right. Madam Any Chair. questions? Madam Chair. Dave, just so I'm understanding this correctly, it, we're literally replacing one tank with three tanks, is that? Correct, so they applied for a waiver earlier I think maybe it was about two years ago. Two years ago, and they to put their current existing tank within that buffer area. What they're proposing to do is put three tanks, and actually the location of the three tanks is farther away from their property line. So, um, you know, if, if if it was become necessary to do any kind of mitigation, <coughs> the location of the three tanks in lieu of the existing tank that would be removed is actually a preferable location. Okay, and just a question, is it a routine switch out of equipment? Is going from one tanks to three, I mean, are they... It's due to growth, it's due to expansion, additional cells, 
and they're generating more leachate, so they need they need that that physical uh, holding of the leachate that you know, is generated as a result of their landfill activities. Okay, so it's just growth and need. Any further questions? I'd be looking then for a motion to approve the resolution granting a solid waste waiver to Von Cole. I so move. Motion made by Commissioner Barant. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Dolan. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Erica. All right. Now, Erica. She would be looking or talking to us about the license modification and renewal. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Um, so Vonco has submitted an application for modification and renewal of their license as listed and referenced in the RBA. Uh, this modification is to allow for yard waste compost, compost operations to occur and other such changes. All right, any questions for Erica on this? Yes, Madam Chair. So, Erica, how long, how often do they come to us for this renewal? Or when's the last time? The last time. I know it was probably in that paperwork you provided. I'm, pro I'm sure. And I don't remember right off the top of my head. So, I believe. So, is this, <coughs> I guess I'm wondering, is it something that's just typically on a cyclical manner or it's, they... it's typically every five uh, okay. years roughly there was a li the license issued in 2016 and then um, and then now we're modifying it and so we're just going to renew it even though it's not quite but it's instead of coming back here in a few months <laughs> it's probably better to just be in proactive take everything right away proactive okay. is good thank you so madam chair licenses are typically issued for a five-year term okay Unless, and any time during that, that, that five-year term, if the applicant is going to modify anything, there's a minor modification process which doesn't require uh, bringing that to the board. If it's a major modification, if they're changing waste stream, if they're adding an activity or such, then that provides, requires opening up the license and bringing it forward to the board to renew as a modified license. Okay. So if during that term, that five-year term, they change something that... That's why we're here. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Madam Any Chair. further questions? Yes, Mr. So Mr. Just, Dolan. Yeah. So just to clarify, we're literally just adding a yard waste component and then the new leachate tanks are the modifications to this. Correct. Okay, Madam Chair, I'll move approval. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Hobie. I'll second, Madam Chair. Seconded by Commissioner Dolan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number 5-3, the 2020 score grant budget. Ms. Holman. Good morning, Madam Chair, morning. members of the board. The proposed score budget line item was reviewed and recommended by the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Attached to the RBA is the program description of various programs that provide for recycling and landfill abatement initiatives. Staff is seeking approval of the score line item budget and various program grants. The recollect agreement, which is also attached to the RBA, has been reviewed and approved by the county attorney's office. The remaining grant agreements will be sent out via DocuSign upon approval of the county attorney's office. All right, any questions? Nope. Hearing none, I'd be looking then for a motion to approve this. You do have it. Madam Chair. Yes, so sir. just Major to clarify, Kobe. so there was a carryover amount of 244, mm -hmm. 184, and what were we awarded last year? Um, so for from the state, what were we, what were we awarded? Usually we get awarded about um let me look here. It's the same every year, but um we'll get about $138,020 twice this year, and it's roughly the same amount as last year. Okay, so is it typical that we carry over that much? It is, because that... a lot of it gets tied up in our uh, recycling day events, and we found a different way to kind of calculate how we're going to move forward with that 
line item so that we don't tie up so much funding in that line item and hopefully reduce carryover. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, we, you know, every year when we approve a budget, it's our intent that we spend the monies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once we award those monies, then it's up to the applicants to spend those monies. And as, as Gabby was indicating, the recycling day events, the township and city cleanup events. Last year was a, a unique process because last year was the first year we didn't have DRE taking bulky waste items. So we tried to increase the recycling opportunity for that bulky waste and the process for how we award those monies did not quite work in that situation so that's what she indicated we revise the process to <coughs> how we award the monies and hopefully this year we're going to spend it all because that's our intent okay i thought that looked a little uh, different okay. so yeah. madam chair yes and, and i you know to to his point it's it's a constant trying to figure out how to allocate and guess how much waste is going to come into these events and it's you know we got a budget for it but like you said it's it's up to the events in order to to utilize it and the success of those so the, i think there's ever since i've been on the board at least there's been a pretty solid carryover but in the last kind of 12 months i think we they've kind of changed stuff so hopefully that stops but okay yeah i, I can speak to the fact that i know the different um, communities that take that do this have really worked hard on streamlining processes trying to make sure that they're being very efficient and um, i think by doing that it's reflected in why there is a carryover. And you guys are obviously going to adjust to it and make sure that there's more money that goes <coughs> out to other needs. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then I'd be looking for that motion to approve the score line item budget as presented. I so move. Motion made by Commissioner, oh, sorry, Barb, Barant. And I'll second. Second made by Commissioner Phoebe. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving on to the approval of a short-term loan to SWCD. Good morning, Madam Chairman and Commissioners. Good morning. So before you is a request, too many papers here, um, for an approval for a short-term loan to uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. They have applied for a grant and received a grant. And I think um, Andrew was supposed to be here too, but I know he's out. But oh, Dave is here. And they could probably give you a little bit more information on that grant, but they did were awarded that grant. This is a reimbursable grant, so they have to make the expenditures first, and they are in the process of doing that. So what they're requesting, they just don't have the cash flow to be able to do that. And they're asking if we would be able to loan them $108,000 with it to be repaid back before December 1st of 2020 when their grant dollars come in. Okay. So they're asking for us to be somewhat of a conduit. Correct. Okay. Any questions for Diane? If not, then I'd be looking for a motion to approve the short-term loan in the amount of $108,000 to the Soil and Water Conservation District to fulfill the grant agreement as a grant recipient for restoration services for the Sherburn County Oak Savannah Park. Madam Chair, I'll move approval. Motion made by Commissioner Phoebe. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Dolan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. Bruce has oh, Bruce oh. has something. Oh, Madam Chair, thank you. I just wanted to note, um, Diane's being very understated. And, and I think we need to be really open about this. Um, you have an incredible staff, as you know, and this was an example of incredible creativity. Uh, you know, Gina, of course, having the experience with the SW, SWCD was, was aware of the challenge that those organizations have when they don't have huge cash reserves. Um, she discussed it with Andrew, Andrew discussed it with Diane, and Diane said, let's make this happen. Um, it was absolutely amazing. It's a can-do spirit because this grant really helps everybody. Um, you know, in the future, maybe the SWC will have enough cash reserves, but until then, since we work so closely with them and this advances so many of our objectives, uh, I, I just thought you should know how important it is and how creative your, your staff is, and, and kudos to Diane and Andrew and Gina for making this happen. 
Thank you. We Appreciate also have that. to thank our county attorney for drafting the repayment agreement and getting all the legalese and stuff in, in place. So we do have the agreement there. So once that is signed by our county board and administrator, then we can process that, that claim right. out. So yeah, yes. and, and she's saying Kathy, not Tim, because Tim's already got a big enough head. So <laughs> <laughs> That was correct. <laughs> well, as a board, we definitely do recognize that we are blessed with awesome staff and uh, everybody working together to make things happen for our county. So we do appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. All right. And thank Moving you, Tim. On. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Moving on then to our item number five, or item number six. Commissioner Correspondence, Committee Reports, Upcoming Meetings, and Future Agenda Items. Who wants to go first? Don't all jump at once, guys. <laughs> Madam Chair, I can, I can start here. Thank you. Um, let's see. I had meetings with, with staff in regards to HHS and our, where we're going with that. Um, CMR2P2. Uh, meeting on Friday, February 7th, um, Magic Fund meeting on Monday the 10th, um, followed by uh, uh, dinner with them and uh, kind of all the members of that committee. And I think that was it for me. Yeah, yep. that brings me through here. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Dolan. Mm -hmm. Um, on the 5th, I attended the Princeton Learning and Living um, Committee, and that is a committee between the business community and the, and the schools, and they will be looking at a bond referendum coming up in the next number of months to build a new, or to add to their high school. Um, the 6th and 7th, as I mentioned earlier, I was invited to be on the Leadership Academy for called Futures with the AMC. Board and we met the 6th and 7th and discussed. Um, we had Huda Ibrahim from St. Cloud, who's an author from Somalia to Snow. So one of our issues was refugee resettlement and the importance of, we worked on our identities as counties and influence that we have on our communities. Um, so an interesting concept of uh, transforming golf courses to sustainable farming, farming and agriculture and opportunities for housing for veterans. Um, also did a deep dive on the census coming up 2020 and it was just a, a great opportunity. It was something I really had looked into and um, past presidents have the opportunity and the, the executive board has the opportunity to invite people so that I'm very honored with that invitation and opportunity that Futures Committee or Leadership Academy meets three times a year. So um, on the 6th, I had the East Central Regional Juvenile Center. On the 10th, the St. Cloud Airport. And that advisory council is absolutely ecstatic with our movement and our progress and very appreciative of the Sherburne County Board for taking the lead on that and they recognize that. Um, I had a Tri-County Executive Committee on the 12th. MICA met in the cities um, on the 13th. Uh, the Soil and Water Committee, which thank you for the board for that bridge loan um, that we creatively came up with. And also on the 13th, I went to a Ladies Agriculture Night, which was hosted by the Soil and Water Office um, at the Diamond A Farms. They were the conservation Farm of the Year and um, hosted a, a group of women who all have farms and ag, and it was really, really great to be there with them. So that's it. Cool, and congratulations on that um, committee assignment. Thank you. You'll serve well. All right, Barb. On the 5th, I was at the um, Zoning and Solid Waste Advisory Committee meeting. And on the 6th, I went to the Council on Aging and also the IEIC meeting. Um, and then on, we canceled the TZD meeting. It was on the 12th. And on the 14th, I participated in the Elk River Leadership class that was held here. And that's all. Thank you. Um, I have to go back a little bit because I was gone um, 
for the last <laughs> meeting. So January 21st, I attended um, a school district town hall meeting that the superintendent in Big Lake has with um, residents that want to come forward and discuss any topics. And that was very enlightening and it was good to see the community come out and take advantage of that opportunity. January 23rd, we had our strategic planning session. January 29th, I attended a community legislation hearing in St. Paul. That was very, very interesting. Um, and February 3rd, um, we had our final strategic planning session. And that is it for me. Anything else? Nope, okay. Moving on then to the next item of business. I gotta find my way. Hang on guys. Sorry, adjourn. Oh, that's a good thing to do. All right, we will be then um, adjourning our regular meeting and opening our ditch authority meeting. Looking for, I can just do that, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for being so patient with me on my first uh, chair um, meeting. Madam Chair, I'll move approval of the ditch authority agenda. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Foby. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Dolan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion carries. We'll now move on to the ditch drainage technician's report. Mike. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mike. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding my written report? It's rather brief. It's the time of the year where there's not a whole lot going on. It's finishing up some things from fall. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's one of your shorter ones, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Got to wait for the snow to melt, and then we'll have longer ones. Right. Any questions? We have some technical challenges. Now, if this was downloading at my house, I'd still be <laughs> waiting. This could be a very short uh, presentation. <laughs> okay. Well, and um, Madam Chair, thanks for sharing the picture of that. That big machine that you used <laughs> and that's that's available for you to use yeah now that I know there's one around in the state of Minnesota it's yeah. <laughs> or I'm sure we'll find more work for it yeah. there's places where that is the only thing really you could use mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. wow. yeah, and here's a picture of it um, front view uh, Dick Haven Township uh, another side view of, of that machine, um, those are big pontoon floats wow. with a track system that goes around it. Pretty much can go anywhere, open water, anywhere, any swamp, bog, anywhere. They utilize these all over the country and in different areas. Where did we end up finding that, Mike? Yeah. Uh, the contractor that originally, or the main contractor that had the job um, f found him and used him as a subcontractor because he didn't have access to this machine. Yeah. So he hired um, hired this contractor. Um, they're based out of Duluth. Okay. So he hired him to do the job. We had tried different methods with that noon crawler and that wasn't the best um, alternative. So he he found this guy and, and hired him to do the job and it, it worked very, very well. Looks like something for tamarack and cedar swamps up on the range yep. for sure. Mm -hmm. Down in the bayous, down in Florida, mm -hmm. down Everglades everywhere. Uh, it's just a picture of the machine doing the work on the south end of the project, cleaning out the ditch. This is ditch 16 in Haven Town. Actually, ditch 15. I, I made a uh, typo there. Okay. Uh, this is after work was complete. 
This is uh, the end of, this is right before New Year's. The work was done about the middle of September, second and third week of, of uh, December. Ditch 19, Becker Township. Uh, all the clean out is complete on this project now from County Road 4 all the way up um, to 67th. Um, at the request of the, of the landowner, uh, the spoil was placed out into the field and is leveled and it will be leveled further this spring. Um, there's still some spoil piles out there. It got really cold, so they started to freeze up. So um, he'll come in in the spring before planting and level everything up real nice for the landowner. Uh, just a picture of the clean out. This ditch was really full. There was a lot of material in here. It was, it's, it was due. It's, it's been about 20 years. I'm just going to ask you when the last time. Yeah. Do we want to be, um, like, is 20 years our normal? Or are we looking to do it more often? It depends on the ditch okay. and the landowner. Um, the landowners, some of them request. It's usually minimum of 10, sometimes 20. I mean, there's some ditches that have been 30, 30 to 40 years be before they're cleaned out. It's, it's pretty much based on the landowner's request. Okay. And um, if they're having a hardship, I mean, if the ditch is functioning and serving their purpose, um, they don't necessarily want to go in there and clean it out if it's... Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna it's it's costly. Uh, just a pile of brush. We burnt a lot of brush out there, <clears throat> trying to get away from burning or, or burying. I'm sorry. Um, I have a couple videos of that machine. <laughs> uh, this is on the north end. It was the easiest access for the machine. We came, uh, utilized the, uh, a farm field on the north end of the project um, to go through here. As you can see, it just floats right on top of the, the cattails. I don't know what the delay here is on the video, but... Um, we know what the delay is. <laughs> The connection, perhaps. <laughs> it's a priority of ours. <laughs> uh, this is towards the south end of the project. As you can see, it just it sits right up on top and goes at it. Hmm. How would that have been done before? Nice. Um, wait till it's frozen okay. and go in there with pads, probably a couple sets of pads, and even sometimes they don't even hold the machine up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this swamp is, uh, there's really a long ways down to the bottom. It's very soft. I mean, I took a 12 foot probe rod and pushed it down, but basically two fingers, and there was really no resistance at all. So. Pretty cool. That's great. I'll shut that down before everybody gets dizzy. <laughs> it's like the old technology when they used to flash the the photos by to make the movie. Yeah. How spoiled we have gotten. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all I have for right now. All right. Any questions or comments? Or? Any questions for Mike? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for all your work. Pretty cool update. All right, nothing else coming before the Ditch Authority. I will adjourn our Ditch Authority meeting, and we will now adjourn our regular meeting and go into workshop. We'll probably take about 10 minutes to transfer to that.